All right, so routing, we'll look at routing first. <clears throat> so when we talk about route, we're talking about this location here, right? This path, the routing path, which is the one after the URL, the port number. This is just the main port num main uh, server. We have a port number, Angular runs a different port number at 4200. And then after that, anything after, anything after that is called the route, right? And the forward slash here is always uh, points to the root of this page or this domain or this site. And anything after that, you know, will lead to a different path that will load a particular component. Okay. So those patterns, URL pattern here or URL path can be set in any way you like. It doesn't matter how you do it or whatever name you use, you choose, you can choose anything you want. It does not need to match the component name, although it's ideal, you can name it whatever you want. And also for secure reasons, like if you go to, you know, how you create a, a classic, uh, you know, HTML page, you have your about index HTML, uh, contact that index HTML, right? I mean, index that HTML. If you navigate to those URL, those pages, then you know for sure that that is the physical page that contains those data. Okay. But with the, um, you know, templated system and frameworks like this, you can change the URL to anything you want. And because you only see the actual page or template and the source code and, and the back end on the source, users will not know what the underlying template looks like or, or, or what it's named. They don't know that. So in a way, it's a way to secure your actual page or file. So they can't hack into your file. Right. Um, <clears throat> show that a little bit later. But I, usually we've seen this before, right? Slash and then the products, and then slash the page, slash the parameter. This would be like an ID, for example, like page three, page two, whatever it is, or maybe your products and then slash just the number for the product ID. So in our, in our app, we have a flight, right? flight slash and then whatever ID is, we'll load the flight information or we want to edit, we'll say edit slash the number of the ID to edit, okay? And then where do we display this pattern or this uh, um, content? Okay, if you want to slash, go to the slash about, where do I render the about content? And that is where we use this Thing called router outlet. You've seen that already in the component, in the app component. And I mentioned before not to delete it because it's we're gonna re, we're gonna revisit that again. So today we'll look at that and what that does. Okay, so it's a it's a special um, placeholder in the component HTML that allows Angular to render a component to that location, okay, to that tag. Okay, uh, dynamically. That means you can load different content to that location. Um, versus if you put like, you know, um, bracket app dash nav, then you will always render the nav component there only. You cannot add other stuff to it. But if you use this router outlet, then this is a placeholder. Kind of similar to, if you remember the um, um, handlebars and the main, uh, you know, index HBS, you have the three brackets follow with the word body and then the closing brackets, right? So the word body is the placeholder to load any content. The same idea for this route here, okay? So <clears throat> to have this work, remember in, when you set up your application, it asks you a question if you want to set routing. And if you said no, then you would not have this file. If you did say yes, then somewhere in your program, you're gonna have a module called routes or router, um, <clears throat> I forget what's called routes. Dot, yeah, routes module right here, okay? This is, a, this is an app called, folder called routes.module.ts. And in that module file, we're going to create some routes and a route looks something like this. There are actually more um, attributes, but we're going to look only at two of them. The uh, first one here, as you can see, it's a it's an object, right? Anything in curly braces is always an object, 
object always have key value pair. Just remember that, okay? So here in this first object, or this called the first path, we have a parameter called path, right, colon. And then here you see there's an empty string. It's kind of tiny, but it's empty string. And what this signifies is that this empty string is actually the root directory, okay, of the page. So in Angular, you should not put a slash here. In Express, we put a slash to indicate that's the that's this slash here. But in Angular, you cannot put that. Okay, if you put that, it's gonna, I believe it's gonna crash your program. So just leave it blank. It will automatically load this slash here, and that is the root directory of your site. The second parameter is a keyword called component, just like it is. Component expects to load. What component should you load? when a user visits this path. And so in this example, I'm going to load the home component. In this case, will be the home page of your site, right? So you would import the home component up here. You need to import that. And then it's gonna render that component when you visit this URL, okay? And if you visit another URL, say product, again, notice we're gonna put a slash in front, just the name of the product, that's it. If you visit this URL, then it matches this pattern. And therefore, I'm going to load another component called product detail component, right? So whatever component is, you put it right here. And it can only be one component per path, okay? Just like the end of our same similar idea. And so you can add all your navigation uh, routes in this file and this object called routes. And as you can see, it's just a variable name, right? It has a colon here. I mentioned last time that a colon here in uh, TypeScript <clears throat> signifies a data type. And so the type of this route is called the routes uh, type, which is a built-in module provided by Angular, part of the Angular framework. So that means your, your data here must follow this pattern. You can't put other stuff in here, okay? And then once you create this variable, and then we're going to, um, because this is a module, right? It's a router module. We're going to export it, as you can see down here. But we need to import, import something here called a router module. And this is already created for us automatically, so you don't have to manually do this. Uh, but if you do you know, create your own, then yeah, you have to follow this kind of pattern here. We pass in the routes we create here to the router module. This module is this module up here. You need this module to um, um, handle all the routes. It will delegate all these routes to a particular uh, component. You render that, okay? That's why you pass it to a function called for root. There's a, I think there's a couple of functions, at least three of them, but the one we use is called for root, meaning we're gonna pass this route to the root component, okay? And, and so all your routes will be accessible in the root component. And um, there's also child component as well, we'll do with that later, where you can have a sub uh, roots, right? Um, <clears throat> and well, uh, a child component will be something like I show you up here. We have like, um, let me see this one example, I think we're not. Yeah, like this would be a child component. So you have the main component or the, the component called products. But under that, you have another component called page, right? This is a child component of this component. So you remember that you can build multiple components under a parent component. So this could be the parent component, the child component. You can have another component, you keep going. So because of that uh, um, you know, capability, you can also design your pattern to match those components and we'll learn how to build child components later when we do with the, um, um, I think, uh, I don't remember if we would get to do that or not, but we'll see. I think we might have to, I think we'll do get to use that as well. So anyway, so you would then pass that to the router module and then you ex export this class add mod to the add module and this add module, um, I think this is incorrect. 
Oh, oh yeah, this is fine. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the air module. Um, okay, so so you this one here, we put the route right on the air module. This example here, you could put it here if you want, but in our in our example, we put it into a separate module and we import it into the air module. Okay, so um, I'm gonna yeah, instead of looking at all these information, we'll we'll come back and we look at this. But I want to go to the app here and look at our app and we'll build some uh, routes for our demo pages, okay? So if you remember our app last week, and I hope everything is still here, let me set my app first. And uh, Okay, I need to do install. <clears throat> okay, while it's installing, I'm gonna go open my SRC folder. I wish this could be big, but it's pretty tiny. Go to the app. And here you will see this app routing that modules file. <clears throat> if you open the file, this is a module. Okay, it has error messages because I'm still installing my app, my uh, com components, but just ignore those red, red stuff for now. You will see that this is what created for us already automatically. We are going to create a route right in here. Okay, this could be an, an object of a route. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have one, two, maybe three, or a couple of them, okay? And then here we create the routes of type routes, and we're gonna import the route module, this one here to that function called root, we're gonna pass our routes to it. All of these will be passed to that function so that Angular will know these patterns. Okay, if it is not passed to that function, to this module, Angular will not know those uh, uh, patterns, it won't work. And then once we got that set up, and then we need to export this module out to another module. In this case, we're exporting this app routing module to the root module called app module right here. And you will see up here, that's the first thing we see in the imports up here. And then we import everything and then we add it to the imports property because it's a module and not a component, right? So now all the modules, all the routes are ac accessible in this uh, route. <clears throat> Okay, so um, that's what we see. Of course, you want to put all your routes in a different the module and put it in. If you don't do that, then you know you want to put all these routes right in here. For example, you could do that. But then again, if you do, if your route gets really big, it gets really bloated, and so it makes your code really ugly. That's why it's not ideal to put it here. If you have like, one or two routes and your app is really small, then sure, that's fine. But ideally, you wanna use a component, I mean, a module to manage those routes. And routes can only be declared inside a module, okay? You cannot put a route in a component. It must be in a module. That's why this is called the app routing module and it's the ng module, okay? That's the rule. So if you want to create your route inside, let's say the about page, you can. That means inside your about page, you must have an about module to manage the routing. Okay. Um, you can do that if you want, of course, absolutely. Um, so we have a module, I remember if we did like at the footer nav, right? The footer nav here, remember we have a footer nav module. We could have a, you know, we could build you know, some navigation in here if you want, because it's a module. And then we import that included in that module to the app component like we did here, right? And that'll be fine. 
if if this file gets really big and if it's um, very hard to manage then you could also you know move some of these components um, these routes to their particular module so that they can be easily ma uh, managed and uh, sometimes that's the case but not always so you will see that all your routes will be contained here all right so <clears throat> now if you open the app component html this is the home page we did last week i did a brief example to show you how you import a table from uh, bootstrap to build our application right and then down here as you can see on the oh, actually on the very top here there's a tag called app.nav and dash nav this is a, a angular tag right component tag we create that in the app net component and this will always be visible the same content every page we go to because it's on this root component template now if i collapse this and go to the bottom of the page you will see here line 40 actually 42 another one right the footer this is when you always render the footer content in every page we go to okay you'll see so, so here in line 40 is the router outlet okay this is where you render components to uh, the the root uh, template here so if you if i navigate to let's say the about page then angular is going to look at the route and find a matching route and then load the component to line 40 and you will see the content here which is the thing that is different but this will be visible it's always the same it is always the same so therefore if you remember back to again the handlebars this is like the um, header navigation right the partial this is the partial and this is the body of your component okay so let me uh, run my app first here i'm gonna go in the serve put the dash o to auto load hopefully no errors uh that's an error um okay that's not regular okay yeah i've been storing good sorry okay. the first should be quick Come on. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. The serve dash O. Let's make sure is everything is running normally. Looks good. I'm gonna close that now, and I'll choose. Um, oh, where do you go? Uh, I lost it. Oh well. Let's go. Local host forty two hundred. All right. So here's the app we did last week. All right, so the navigation here, as you can see, if I click the about, it flashes right here, it flashes, right? Slash about, and then it's gone. Same thing here, flight, add, right? And uh, edit something, okay? Because you would never load the content because the routing was not set. So we, now we need to set the route to take us to the home page, which is the forward slash, the about, the flight, and the app flight, okay? So let's go to the source code and I'll close this terminal and we'll leave this as is. So now if I go to this app routing module and I'm going to add 
the about page. Well, let's add the add the home page first. In our case, the home page is really the uh, add component here, right? Um, we have this form here. <clears throat> okay. So this form here, really later on, you're going to move this to a flight uh, um, component. Um, you know what? Maybe we should do that. Okay. Let's do that. <clears throat> I don't want to load this on a home page. Home page should be something about your flight information. So we'll create another component for the home page, and then we'll move this table to another component. We'll call it maybe flight data or flight list is the one I use. Okay. So why don't we do that first? And go again back to the terminal. And let's add another tab here. Leave that open. So navigate to your application, make sure you're in the application directory where the uh, package JSON is, right? You must be in that, that file, that directory. And let's create a component called flight list. And when we navigate to the flight list, we're gonna show that information. And that is going to, let me see, right here. If I click on this flight, it shows the, the URL is just flights. Right, so let's create a component for the flights. So when I navigate to this page, it's gonna show this instead. On the home page, it will show something else. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna go ng generate a component called flight. I will call it flight list. Okay, but our route will be just called flight. Flights, right, list all the data. And I don't need the test, so dash dash skip tests. And also I don't need the style sheet. So dash dash S for style sheet <clears throat> and hit enter. It's gonna create two files for us, just the ones that we need. All right, so now, then this is the app component HTML. I'm going to copy um, everything from line three. Uh, let's see. No, not line three, just the table, okay? I'm gonna copy the table line four, all the way down to line 35 in my example. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut it out actually, I'm not gonna copy it, cut it out. And paste that into the flight list HTML component, okay? So we replace everything here with that. So I moved everything over to this page. And I really want my thing to, um, see how my data is not like, it's not wrapped. It needs to be wrapped so I, don't, I can see it. Um, let me see. I usually click here and let me do it, but this one doesn't let me do it. Let me do config first. Go to config, preference, settings, and type for wrap. So word wrap here, it's off, it should be on, okay? So make that on and save. So now it, it wraps, okay? So I don't have to scroll left and right. Okay, so I move my content here now in the app component this is gonna where I put my home stuff so therefore all my content should be loaded inside this tag if that's the case then I want to um, we'll see what that looks like because usually I want to put this inside the div tag I'm going to try putting here and see what's like okay it might be different if it's different we can always change it because all my, all, I want all my content to be contained within the content class. So my route will be in here. All everything else will be rendered here, right? So let's save that for now. And why don't we create another component called the home component? And we'll we'll put that in here as well. All right. So back to the terminal again. Create another one, NGGC uh, home. <clears throat> Just home. Again skip all tests and skip the style sheet. So the home page is the landing page. The app that component HTML is the shell. If you remember um, the other example we did, right? So this this component here is like the index.hbs and the handlebars. We usually don't touch this, right? You just put a navigation and the footer, and then the content will be changed here. And so we load the home page here, about page here, and so on. So this was done for now. I'm going to close this. 
And I'm going to also close the terminal. So I have a home component here, as you can see. This is the home page. And you can put some stuff here, right? So you can do something like, um, maybe not home works, but H1, you know, um, welcome to my Angular app, right? Or, or something, okay? That's your home page. So I save that. And so now we're ready to go and then build our routes. So right in here, the first one is the home page. So the order here is not important. The only important is the catch all. Again, there is also a catch all in Angular, and I should say most frameworks have it. If you remember in the handlebars, is the star, right? Or express. The star is the catch all. And Angular is similar, it uses two stars. So we'll use that um, later. But for now, the first one is going to be our path to the home page. So again, the home page will be just the slash. And the slash, again, don't include it. If you put, you put a slash, it won't work. So just put a blank. And that, when I go to net, that route, it's going to render which component is it? Well, it's the component called home component. So as you can see, if you have it already, you hit enter, it's gonna import the home component automatically here. You need that in order to use it, right? Put that here. And then we got our first component, okay? So now watch what happens when I click save. I added one route, it's going to load a home component. I, re I remove my, um, here's my home component. So if I navigate to my web page, uh, you'll see, well, okay, some errors. I need to probably reload my script. Let's go to terminal and run it again under the first tab. Some errors here, right? So the uh, reason why this fails because um, I have some information I which I don't have anymore. And yeah, I need to fix this first. When we moved the, um, let's fix that. We moved the flight list over here, right? We don't have access to this anymore because the flight list component does not have that information, right? There's no data. So therefore I need to go to the app component TS over here and uh, copy these over. So copy the flights, I should remove this over, okay? the flight and also the delete function we created last week and also this import up here. You need to move that over to the other file. So we're gonna cut that up and move that to the flight list component TS right down here. You can leave this as if you want, you can remove it, it's okay too. <clears throat> and then it has a red line because we need to import that. Okay, so you could go back here and copy this or cut that out, right? And paste it up here. Or in Angular, if you if you have the data, you just don't import it. You could also put a mouse over that red line. And there is a option that says quick fix. If you click on that, it's going to ask you to import the component. If that's the one you want, then yes, you click on it and it will automatically import that for you as well. Okay, so when you see something like that, you know, mouse over and see if there's a shortcut to help you in, uh, import. Um, and sometimes you have more options, just make sure you get the right one. So now we got our data back in, and then now our template has access to the flight, and therefore our app should work just like before. And it's not working because of other, other, other stuff. We added some other stuff to the component. So. I'm going to terminate my application and run it again, okay? And then I'm going to say um, ng serve. I won't use the dash o anymore because my app is already running in the browser. I just need to refresh the browser. Okay, all done. And let's give it a try. All right, so there's nothing here. And I'm going to press F12, see this any errors. Okay, my console has some errors. <clears throat> okay, it says routing one of the following must be um, 
so it's so it's not working because um, my route um, is it slash. I might have those empty routes. Let's see. Let's remove. Um, let's remove. Um, what is it? This is. Well, let me save this file first. Okay, let's save that first. I don't touch this for now. My route. Let's let me remove these. Um, okay. And let's see. Okay, so there it is. Yeah, I had some empty routes, so it doesn't work. All right, so make sure you move those empty rubble we'll added later. And then you see that now my home page is and is no longer displaying the table anymore. It loads the home component right between the nav and the footer in that location. Okay? And why? Because we add the root of the URL, the slash. In fact, if you go to any page, it's gonna load that because that is well, yeah, as you can see now, it doesn't load anymore. This nothing to load because there's no magic pattern for that. <clears throat> okay, if I go to, you know, slash ABC, there's no URL for that, so therefore nothing is loaded. And because routing is now in place, taking place, so therefore there's no matching route for that. And then you see that it's not working and there's no error. Okay, so far so good. And that's where the catch all comes in. So once you provide routes, then everything must match, right? Um, and also because we we modify our root component to include the route only before we put the actual tag in here on the actual table here. So if you don't put a route, then of course it's going to show up here like the nav and so on. So for example, if I go here and put back to the app dash home, right, that is always going to be visible. And then I have my route below it. So in this case, I'm going to show that twice. The app home is always there. This only runs when the pattern matches. So if you see on my page, you see I have two of them. This is the one that is fixed. It's always visible. This one here only runs when the pattern matches. So when I navigate to another page, you will see that the second one is gone. This is, again, it's visible on every page. So whatever is visible on every page, you put into the root component, like I just did. Like your navigations here, your footer. If, if something that's not supposed to be there, only when you reach a certain destination, then don't put it there. Okay? So if you understand this concept, you'll see how most frameworks work just like this. Okay, so in this case, I'm not going to put it here. I'll load it only when I match the pattern. Okay, so let's go and create a catch all first. So down here, your catch all will look similar to this, but you put it around here. It must be the, the last one also, very bottom. You put two stars in here, it's the catch all. And where does it take you when you reach this pattern? So you can have another, you know, not found component like you did with the Express application, or you can always, you know, navigate to the home page if that's the case. So uh, since I don't have a not found component, I'm going to load the home page as a default. Okay, so if I navigate to something that doesn't exist, always takes you to the home page. So I'll put that here and we'll see if that works. Okay, save that. Uh, go back to the browser. Okay, so this is the home page. If I navigate to about, you'll see it always loads the home page. Now you'll see that the navigation sticks. Okay, before it did not stick because there's no matching pattern, because now the catch all will catch every pattern in your browser. It doesn't matter if they exist or not. Because it, because you can catch that, now the URL sticks. Okay, if I go to about, go to flights, app flights, whatever, you know, whatever you put here will run because the catch-all will catch it. So just like before, that's the catch-all. It must be the last. If it's not, you will never reach the other uh, components or pattern. Okay, so that's the last one. Now let's create for the other one. I'm gonna copy this and I do it maybe three, four times. That's the home page. <clears throat> you can also say if the user goes to, if, you, if they type like home, that will also load the home page, right? You can have multiple patterns. This loads the home page 
the blank loss homepage. If they type home, loss homepage. If they type index, also loss homepage. So you have all those options. So I'll keep those two up here. And then the next one is the about page. So about will load the about component. So I need to go here and load the about component and hit enter. Again, it imports that for you automatically up here if, it, if it's not already imported. The other one here is the flights. Um, they show all the lists of the flights. That's the URL. This pattern here uh, must uh, match your routing pattern. Like, um, I think we have a navigation for this as well, right? And our nav, if you look at the navigation component, we have, we, we did this last week with a URL. We have a, um, a list of data, the nav modules, uh, models, uh, right here. Okay, it goes to the flights URL, right? So make sure this flight URL here, this one here matches your pattern. Okay, this not take precedence. This one here, this one takes precedence, okay? If, if you don't match these patterns, your navigation will not work. Okay, so these patterns here depend on your route and not the other way around. So these take over. So that's gonna go to the flight list component. That's this guy right here. And add another one. You can press the Alt Shift down. And this is going to go to the edit. Um, well, yeah, add flight. I think I just call it add. Let's see. Yeah, I just call it add. Okay, so add flight. Here we're going to have another component which you don't have. Um, we don't have it yet. Okay, so we're going to, um, yeah, you're going to create a component because you don't have it. Um, well, we can create that now. So let's go over here to this terminal and add a component. So ng, gc, uh, call it add flight. So say add flight. No, I'm sorry. Add dash flight at a single flight only right and i don't want to test skip tests and skip the style sheet okay all right done so we have an app flight component so now we can go ahead and import that app flight component App flight component here it is. It goes to the page. It's nothing there yet. Just a simple text. It just say app flight works. And then we have uh, we have one more for the edit. Okay. Even though our navigation does not have it, right? There's no edit here. Well, we get the edit from the form, the list. So if you go to the list component, you see at the bottom of your code here. There is a link to the edit page. Okay, so the edit here is the URL takes an ID. So that is the pattern. So therefore, and our navigation, we're going to say edit slash colon ID, just like express before. Remember, you did that. So this ID here is a parameter you set. It does not need to be called ID. It, it, it could be called like, you know, flight ID, whatever. So whatever you use here, you must also remember to retrieve that when you load it from the browser, okay? So, um, but it's commonly called ID um, or, or flight ID or, or you know, um, course ID or student ID, right? Doesn't matter. And this is gonna load the edit component, which again, we don't have. So again, we don't have it, we're gonna create one. So let's go and create another one again. And this time I'm gonna just up arrow and go change it to say edit flight. We're gonna edit only a single flight, so it's singular, right? So again, hit enter. We get our components, all done. Now we just need to load that edit component, edit component. 
edit flag component. And there we go. So we got all our URLs that we need. And we got our catch all down here. Just make sure it's the, at, the, at the bottom. And then we are good to go. Okay, so let's save this and um, go back to the browser. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna remove this A, B, C here. It looks kind of ugly. Okay, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, this A, B here, I don't like that. So let's remove those. I tested last week to show you that your nav does work. So in the app, in nav, nav, not the models, and the nav component uh, down here. TS, I mean HTML, right? We added the A, A, B, B, C, C here. So we move those tags here. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so now it's clean. All right, so this is the home page, as you can see, takes to the home page. This takes the home page, the slash. Okay, so just remember one thing though. I want to clear, clarify one thing. Remember that when I, I mentioned that in the routing, you don't put a slash here. Okay, you don't put a slash here. If I put a slash here, what happens? For example, if I save that, put it here, you go to my page, you see that it, it doesn't work. Okay, it crashes. Okay, if you navigate to F12, it said this is invalid path, cannot start with a slash. Okay, that's, that's just the rule of Angular. It is not, it doesn't mean that every framework have this problem. Right? Express uses the slash, you have to put slash there. But Angular does not use it, so just make sure if it's the root directory, root path, don't put the slash here. Okay? So here, again, here you don't put slash, like I don't put slash home here, like that, right? If you notice again, if you go back, and see, same thing, I got an error, cannot start with a slash, okay? Because if you do that, I mean, uh, the, uh, the underlying code would think this is the root root of your page. So it doesn't work that way, it has, it has a conflict. Just like how you go to a URL, right? And remember in regular HTML, if you put, for example, if you do this, um, you know, let's say image and you put SRC is equal to slash, um, you know, IMG slash A dot JPG, right? If you do that, this slash here means it's the root directory. It is not the relative path. So usually you don't put it here, right? You would just put an image and then slash A JPEG, okay? So that's the subtle difference between the slash and without the slash, right? So the slash will start from the root directory and you may not find your image. So that's why you have the problem. So Angular tries to prevent that from happening so therefore you should not put a slash here if it's the root, if it's starting from the root. If it's not from the root, then yeah, you can put a slash after that, that's fine. It's required, but if it's the root, then don't put it there. So your path, you can't put it here. However, your navigation, don't confuse with your navigation though, when you create navigation like HTML stuff, uh, you can put slash. You treat this just like regular HTML. So notice here, and when we build our navigation, href, we load the URL here, right? And our nav data, so in our nav data, we have the slash in there, okay? These are not pattern. These are not URL pattern in the, uh, in the uh, framework. This is just actual URL if you were to type this on a, um, on a link. That's why you need to put slashes here. Either you put it here in the link here, or you add it here like this, right? So those are okay. And it can be confusing to just make sure you differentiate between the two, okay? So we got our pattern done, all, all set. And then now, again, let's go back and test our application. All clean now, we move those A, B stuff. If I now navigate to about, there it is. It loads the about page, navigation stays, the footer stays. The content is only rendered in that routing outlet, right? If I go to the flights, there is a table, okay? So your content stays, the footer and nav stays the same. Add flight, there's nothing there yet, but you're gonna add a form, a form that will add all, add one record. You will have all these fields in there so you can add it to your list. 
And when we edit, if you click on edit now, you see that it loads the edit page. Again, it loads the URL, URL is fixed. It's, we're gonna grab this index one, well, this case, not index, but with the ID, the actual ID of the flight, and then um, not the flight number, okay, ID, because we call it ID, and then we load that ID, it will pre-populate the form, which will look very similar to the to the app flight. If you remember, you, we did the Ajax form way back in Web 2. Um, we added the book stuff, right? Same idea. You have a form that loads the book content, and you pre-fill those fields with the data. So the same idea here. This time, though, we're using Angular instead, OK? Um, and you will see that it, it's quite different. And um, and because we're using data binding, if you remember data binding, you bind date, you bind to an input tag, and so um, it's quite different from the traditional way of doing things. All right. So now, if you notice one thing though, when I navigate to a page, right, the page refreshes, reloads, it flashes. Um, see the arrow here refreshes. If I go to the about, right, it flashes. Okay, so usually you don't want that. You want that to be very smooth. Okay, right. You want to be uh, um, no no re, no refresh, no reloading. The URL changes, the content will change, but the page will never reload. Okay, in Angular, you can do that by changing your route, like up here. The um, the nav component. Right here, close this. Okay, so everywhere where you have a link, like the anchor link, or anywhere that is going to load a navigation link, you want to add this directive to prevent that from refreshing. Uh, you can put it anywhere in the in the tag here. So I'm going to put it right in here. <clears throat> it's called a uh, router. Um, you know what? I don't remember what that what that thing is. It's a link. It's a router link. Let me find it. There is either it's in my notes or um, somewhere. I can't remember. Let's find it. It's an easy one. It's just a very simple. Um, you know what? It's a very simple uh, uh, tag. Let me, let me find it. I know I have it somewhere. Let's see. Navigation. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's called the router link. Um, let me go to Angular and we'll, we'll look at that. So Angular router link. That's the one I want to use. Okay. And their and their content page. It's really slow. I want to show you the notations so you can use it. You're going to replace you're going to replace the um, href with the router link um, directive instead. Okay, so here the router link allows you to um, add links to your page, and it will it will manage by Angular, and so that it doesn't have to re refresh your page. Uh, doesn't help me much here. Okay, let's see, maybe down here. Mm, come on. Okay, right, like right here, okay? So you will use something like this. Instead of instead of saying href equals that URL, you replace the href with the router link, right? Um, you don't have to put the brackets around here. If you don't you don't buy it this way, you just put it directly equal to uh, well, this is binding using the square brackets. You also bind using the curly braces if it's one or the other way, if you remember routing. Uh, so I guess what I mean is, let's see. Yeah, so if you go to the link here, right? So here, instead of href, we're gonna say router link equals that, okay? So now it's gonna bind 
this navigation link to the router link component or module, and it will manage, this, manage that for us. And we do the same down here. So all your href will be linked to controlled by Angular if you pass, replace it with the router link. Okay, remember you do it this way with a curly, or if you bind this side, then you cannot put curlies over here. Okay, remember, one way or the other, you cannot do both. Um, you should not do both, okay? So since we have, have it this way, it's usually commonly do it this way. All right, so I'm doing only for the navigation, so all the links and navigation will be kind of like that. Let's see if it makes that difference. Now, let's go to the browser and load our application uh, right here. Okay, refresh it first. So here, if I click on the about page, um, I made a mistake somewhere. I might have to import something. Let's see. It's not working because it's an error. It does not know the router link. I have to import that to the module. Um, let's go to the app module up here, and we need to import a, uh, a module called and the enforce router link. Okay, right here, router link. We need that to be imported in the root module, add module. If you type it in ports right down here, it should automatically import, import it for us here from the router. Okay, you need that to uh, manage the routing. So save that again, and let's try one more time. Here's our app. Um, okay, it has, it has those error. I might have to re reload my page. Let's see what the errors are. Okay. Um, so let's let's cancel this and run again. Okay. Sometimes you have to rerun again. And you serve. Hopefully that fix fixes the error. Okay, I'm missing something. Um, routes, routes module. Okay, I'm missing something here. Let's see what's, um, what's going on. Let me see, I have here a component. No, nope, not that one. Let's see something really quick. Yeah, bro, my joy is there. And I'm going to look at my app component, add module. I'm missing one thing, I'm pretty sure. That's why it's not recognizing me. And let me find it. Add module. Add module, that's there. The nav module is there. Nav component. I'm missing something. All right, let's see the routing module. If I can't figure it out, well, I'll do it next time. But for sure, I'm. I think I got everything in already. I'm not sure why that's not working. Yeah, it looks okay to me. Um, if, if this routing link doesn't need it, then I probably don't need it, but let's see. Oh, link. I ring the router, which would declare routing has not been processed code by NGC. It's not compatible IV, okay. Um, it's not compatible IV? Hmm. 
Okay, let's remove that. It seems like it's not compatible here. Interesting. Let me delete this again. Well, yeah, it's not working now for some reason. Uh, it doesn't recognize the route. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out, okay? But it's it's the way you do it. Um, you're gonna change that navigation to use the router link instead of that. Um, unless unless they change that in a new version, which I'm not aware of. Because this one here it shows differently. Did they change it? Hmm. Okay, well, yeah, I'll figure out next time, okay? Because I know it should it should work. Um, I'm probably missing something, or maybe the, the new updates. I mentioned that they're always updating stuff. If that's the case, then that's the case. But um, yeah, it should it should work the way we have it here. Um, but let me try this way, the way they had. If I do this. I'll put this back to just the old href. I'm gonna try just the home page, okay? Any errors in my script? Nope. Okay. URL. No, still doesn't work. Yeah, so it doesn't recognize it, and I'll figure it out. Oh well, I thought I had it, but guess not. Okay, we'll fix it later. All right, so uh, we get our navigation um, all set up. And scale of flight information. Okay, anything else that we need to add to these routes? Uh, we're not gonna learn how to fetch the ID yet. Okay, you do that next time when you um, build the edit page. Uh, there is a way you need to access the ID so you can load the content. All right. Um, so, yeah, so basically that's it about navigations. Okay, you, you put it here and then you export them out. Again, the order in here is not important. I can move this around, doesn't matter. That's what they are. The only thing is that this must be, um, must be the last one here. And in this case, yeah, this this important. The order for this one is important, but the one above is not important. It was still gonna go, you know, one at a time to find it. Uh, but at the end, the last one here is important. Uh, and normally it's not, right? But for URL, in this case, it is. 